Hello everyone. Welcome back to our course on mechanical behavior of materials part two. So in the last lecture, uh, we discussed about the development of uh, triaxial stress condition in front of the notch. Okay, and uh, we also discussed that this is this happened because of the uh, maintain uh, you want to maintain the continuity along the other directions, right? Because sigma y y or sigma one one decreases as you move away from the notch tube. Okay. And then we also discussed about how the stress uh, varies in front of the nose tip in plane stress and plane strain condition. And we figured out that in plane strain condition, you have triaxiality in front of the nose tip. And in plane stress condition, you are having a uh, biaxial stress condition in front of the nose tip. Okay. So today we will uh, uh, discuss more about this where we will include uh, uh, small scale yielding in front of the nose tip and then we will come to uh, a topic on uh, plastic zone size determination. Okay. So let's proceed. So we are talking about triaxiality. Okay. So let's now add uh plasticity right so small scale yielding so we know that uh, uh, if the tip is sharp and uh, there is a small scale yielding there is a local plasticity then track tip is going to get blanket right we discussed that before also so if you are in uh, plane strain condition, say plus plane stress condition, okay. So we will now apply the tracer criteria for yielding, which has been discussed in part one. So the tracer criteria says you have sigma max minus sigma mean equal to sigma y, right? Where sigma max and sigma mean are principal stresses, maximum principal stresses and minimum principal stresses. And sigma y is your yield strength, okay? Now we also know when we are talking about the crack plane, remember I mentioned that we will mostly deal with the crack plane uh, phenomena, okay? So in the crack plane, since there is no shear stress, I mentioned before that the stresses, whatever you are seeing, those are principal stresses, right? So the sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 2, those are principal stresses in the or on the track plane, okay? So sigma max, we can write sigma 1, 1 and then sigma mean is sigma 3, 3 equal to sigma y, right? So if my direction was sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 2, all right, okay? A 1, 1 along uh, vertical direction and 2, 2 along this direction, okay? And since this is plane stress condition, sigma 3, 3 is equal to 0. So this equation, it will be now sigma 1, 1 equal to sigma 1. Okay? So this uh, says that as soon as my sigma 1, 1 becomes equal to sigma y, y, tracer criteria is valid, right? That means your material is going to yield as soon as sigma 1, 1 becomes sigma y, okay? So if you see the plot, so suppose we have the condition, okay? So this is what we have, right? So sigma one one varies like this, we know. Okay. So now at the track tape, in front of the track tape, as soon as sigma one one becomes sigma y, your material is going to yield. That is the yielding criteria predicted by Presta, right? So sigma y y, say, will be somewhere here. A sigma y will point. Okay. So at this particular point, your material is going to yield. So if you are above that, 
welding has already occurred till now we were assuming it to be perfectly plastic uh, sorry perfectly elastic so it was like elastic body right now as soon as we are talking about small scale welding and sigma 1 1 is higher than sigma y your material is going to end okay now if i assume that you know your material is perfectly plastic and if you remember what was the definition for perfectly plastic material that if i have sigma and epsilon sigma becomes like this right so sigma is constant with respect to strain so this is your perfect plastic right if i assume right see we are making lots of assumption because uh, we want to come to some uh, relations right so one of the assumption here is that we are assuming it to be perfectly plastic so if you assume that then your curve is going to become something like this okay so the variation of sigma 1 1 due to a small scale yielding in front of the thread tape you know it varies like this where uh, you have sigma y it becomes constant up to certain distance and then it goes down and this is happening because there is a small scale yielding and sigma criteria validity is there and we are also assuming perfect plastic material okay if there is a strain hardening, then obviously it is going to be higher than sigma y. Okay? Your curve is going to have some slope like this. It is not going to be perfectly plastic. So it is not going to be horizontal. Right? But for this one, we will assume that it, to, it is to be perfect plastic material and the variation of sigma y is going to be something like this. So this is your plane stress condition where the minimum stress is zero. Okay. Now let's talk about the plane strain condition. So let's apply again the Crestra criteria. So sigma 1 1 minus sigma 2 2 equal to sigma 1. Okay, for LD. Or we can write sigma 1 1 equal to sigma y plus sigma 2 2. Right. Now let's uh, see what we got for plane stress. So if I am just writing here on the side now. So plane stress. We obtain that yielding is going to happen when sigma 1 1 equal to sigma y we just discussed it right so this is building uh, and for plane stress and for plane strain we are getting sigma 1 1 equal to sigma y plus sigma 2 2 right so it means that the plane strain condition is going to suppress yielding isn't it because in the plane stress condition you required only sigma y for yielding to occur now here you have another factor of sigma 2 2 which needs to be there so that the material can yield. Okay. So overall if you see in plane strain condition. Yielding is being suppressed. Okay, why? Because you have another factor of sigma 2, 2 in addition to sigma y, right? So you require higher amount of stress for material to fill. Okay, so that is observation number one. Now, second observation, if you see the plane stress condition, plane stress condition, The yielding criteria is going to be similar to what we have discussed for uniaxial loading. Okay.
right? Because in plane space, we have sigma 1, 1 equal to sigma y. And that is what we have discussed during tensile testing, isn't it? That as soon as the stress becomes equal to L point, or L distress symmetry is equal to L. So in plane stress condition, yielding condition is similar to the uniaxial condition. But in plane strain condition, you have another factor of sigma 2, 2. So you require higher amount of stress more than the yield point right? Uh, during this. Okay. This is uh, what we have uh, in terms of uh, the triaxiality in front of the tractic. Okay. So now what we will discuss, we will discuss about the uh, determination of plastic zone. So as soon as you have a small scale yielding in front of the tractic, you are going to have plasticity and that will lead to certain amount of plastic zone. Okay, So we are going to determine the shape and size of the plastic zone. Plastic zone, shape, and size. Okay. So we start with uh, purely elastic method, then we will come to uh, Irwin's approach where uh, there will be some correction with respect to what we will obtain uh, for uh, purely elastic method, plastic zone size. Okay. So if you remember sigma 1 1. We had derived that to be A1 root over 2 pi r. So now I am talking about mode 1. So that's why I am using I am using K1. Okay. Then cos theta by 2 okay. So this is what we have for sigma 1 1. Again, the direction is 1, 1, 2, 2. Okay, now let's talk about first plane stress condition. So let's uh, apply the Trestra criteria and we will apply again on the track plane. Okay. So it suggests sigma mass minus sigma mean equal to sigma y. Again, sigma here is the principal stresses. So at the track plane, We have uh, whatever we are getting right at the track plane, uh, the shear stress is zero. So the stress is sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 2, uh, they will become uh, principal stresses, right? So here sigma 3, 3 is zero because it is plane stress condition. So this goes as zero and sigma 1, 1 is sigma, uh, sigma mass is sigma 1, 1. Okay. So what you are getting is sigma 1, 1 equal to sigma 1. We just derived this, the same thing. Okay. So, yielding is going to occur in plane stress condition as soon as sigma 1 1 becomes equal to sigma y. Now, let me put the above equation as 1. Okay. So, now let's put sigma 1 1 equal to sigma y in equation 1. Okay. So, from equation 1, We can write sigma 1 1 will be sigma y equal to a1 root over 2 pi r, right? And then cos theta by 2, 1 plus sin theta by 2, sin 3 theta by 2, okay? And at the track plane, this whole term will be equal to 1 at the track plane. Okay, because theta equal to 0, again remember from our previous discussion, this is your track plane.
where theta is zero. Okay, so we can write now sigma y equal to a one divided by root two pi r. Okay, so we have to find out what is r, and that is going to be your plastic zone size, isn't it? At the track plane. Okay, so the r will be now, or let's call it r y now. R y is one by two pi a one by sigma y whole square. Okay, so this becomes your R y, which is your plastic zone size. In plane stress. Okay, that means if I have this notch here. So from our previous discussion, we found out that sigma yy is uh, is going to vary something like this. Right. So this is your sigma y. Your sigma one one is going to vary like this. So this here, this length is your R1. Okay. So if the stress is above this, that means, and assuming we are again assuming it to be perfectly plastic, right? So this particular uh, region, your material is deforming plastically. So that is your plastic zone size. So this R1. And if the stress is above that, it is not going to deform, right? Okay, so this is in plane stress condition. And what will happen in plane stra strain condition? You know now that it is going to require higher amount of stress than plane stress condition for yielding, right? So for plane strain condition, Sigma 1 1 minus sigma 2 2 equal to sigma y. Again, this is at the track plane. Remember, we are applying pressure criteria where the sigma is principal stresses and only at the track plane you don't have shear stress. Okay, so sigma 1 1 and sigma 2 2 automatically become principal stresses. So it becomes very easy. You don't know all the calculation purpose to use the crack plane because now you can apply very easily the pressure criteria. Okay. So sigma one one equal to sigma y plus sigma two two. So as soon as sigma one one becomes equal to sigma y plus sigma two two, your material is going to yield. And then you can calculate what is your plastic zone size. So if I just combine both. Plane stress and plane strain. Okay. So originally, if you remember, our lot was like this. Okay. So this was our sigma one one. Now, if I assume it to be plane stress condition is going to be say something like this where this is sigma y okay so this is the profile for sigma 1 1 for plane stress condition okay now if i plane strain condition the material is going to yield when sigma 1 1 is equal to sigma y plus sigma 2 2 okay so assume that uh, it is going to be higher than sigma y now so assume that it is going to yield somewhere here and since we are again assuming the material is, is perfectly plastic i am just drawing the horizontal line there okay this particular plot the green one here okay now becomes the plot for sigma 1 1 
for plane strain condition. Okay. Now see the plastizone size qualitatively now. So this is your plastizone size. If I just draw this. So this green line here, this is your plastizone size for plane strain condition. Because above, inside this zone, you are going to have stresses, which is higher than the sigma y plus sigma 2t. Okay, so this particular point here is sigma y plus sigma 2t. So this is your plastic zone size in plane strain. Okay. And for plane stress, you are going to have this particular size, right? Here. So this is Ry and this will be plastic zone size in plane stress condition. Okay, so you can qualitatively see if you have plane stress condition, your plastic zone size is higher than what you have in plane strain condition. Right, you can clearly see now. Okay, so this implies plastic zone size is. Higher in pain, stress condition than in pain, strain condition. Okay, so this is one important conclusion from uh, the derivative we have just done. The second is we know Ry we just calculated for plane stress. This is 1 by 2 pi p1 by sigma y square. We just calculated this, right? Similarly, we can write plane strain. Just replace sigma y by sigma y plus sigma 2. See on the top right. Uh, top left. Okay. So 1 by 2 pi 1 by sigma y plus sigma 2 2 policy. Okay. Now see if, uh, if uh, the material is known, you know what is sigma y. If the configuration is known, then you know what is K1. So for plane stress condition, you can find out what is R Y. Right? Now for plane strain condition, you need to know what is sigma 2 2 here. Right? To figure out what is R Y. And we are going to calculate that. Right? We are going to assume something and then we will come to a relationship between R Y and sigma Y and K1 for plane strain condition also. Now, let's come to first to the uh, Irwin's approach for calculation of uh, plastic zone size. So, there is some correction to it and I will let you know what is that correction. Okay. So, Irwin's approach. Okay. So, we have discussed this. So we have sigma 1 1 originally without trap tip yielding. Now we introduce trap tip yielding. When we introduce flat tip building, we draw the curve like this. Okay. 
Figma one one. And this, uh, okay, so this is your practice building and this one we now know it is RY. Depending upon the plane stress and plane, plane strain, this RY is going to change. But this curve, nature of the curve remains same. Okay. Now think about it. What happened to this shaded line now? So we have reduced the curve, assuming that this is behaving like perfectly plastic, but this particular stress, a shaded one, this has to go somewhere. It just cannot, you know, vanish, right? So if you see the previous curve was the red one, okay? The new curve for sigma 1 1 is the blue one, but this particular region, the shaded region, the purple color, right? It has just vanished and that cannot happen practically, right? It has to go somewhere. That means stress because of the yielding is going to redistribute itself in the material. Okay. So after the material has yielded, the shaded region is going to redistribute it in the material itself. Okay. This means that the blue curve here, okay, I'm now just showing in the purple color. So this blue curve here, now it is purple. This is going to change because the stress, the shaded region stress is going to redistribute itself, right? This also means that some part of it, you know, is going to be higher than what we have now, the value, right? This also means that the RY, the plastic zone size is going to be higher now because the stress, some of the stress in that shaded region has been redistributed to the nearby region ahead of the practice. So originally my uh, sigma 1 1 was lower. Now because of the redistribution of the stress, some addition has occurred in the previous curve. Okay. So that means some of the regions can again become higher than sigma y, the stress distribution. That means it is going to yield. So ry is going to be now higher. And that is what the correction uh, given by Irwin now. So you are going to have stress redistribution. Shaded region of purple in the material. And when that happens, you are going to have higher plastic zone size. So this is your original sigma one one. Okay. Now, when we have small scale yielding, this is what we had got before. Okay. And because of the redistribution of stress, we are going to have a new curve where some of the regions ahead of the crack tip is further going to be observing higher amount of stress than what we had previously and it is going to yield. Okay. So you are going to have something like this. Okay. And this is happening because of redistribution of stress. Okay. Blue one was because of small scale yielding. And the red one originally, right? Original one. No yielding. So you now understand how did we approach to this problem. We started with the no yielding condition. 
right? That is what we had learned before. Then we introduced the small scale yielding and we assume that the material is perfectly plastic. So we got the blue curves, right? Then stress redistribution needs to be there. So now we got the purple curve for um, uh, plastic zone size determination. Okay. And this is what the Irwin's approach. So overall, due to redistribution of stress, which is the shaded region, the plastic zone size increases from Ry to now Rp. Okay. So let me show you Ry and Rp. So this one is your Ry. In the purple one, it's for Okay, RP is greater than R1, RY you can clearly see now. Okay. So this is valid for uh, plane stress. Okay. And the same would be valid for plane strain also. Only thing is it will just go up. Okay. And again, remember in plane strain condition, since the redistribution is going to be smaller, then RP is also going to be smaller. Let me show you that by schematic. So what I mean now, So stress distribution is sigma 1 1 okay. and say sigma y is here. Okay. So in the case of uh, plane stress condition, you had a di to distribute you know, this shaded region. Right. But in the case of uh, plane strain condition, suppose this is sigma y plus sigma 2 2 for yielding in plane strain condition okay so in plane strain condition you have to redistribute only the small region right the shaded region so the red one this shaded region this is needs to be redistributed in plane strain and the purple color one this needs to be redistributed in plane stress condition Right. So the shaded region in the case of plane stress is higher than the plane strain condition. Right. So even after redistribution, RP is going to be higher in plane stress condition than in plane strain condition. So previously we had figured out that RY in plane stress was higher than RY in plane strain. And even after correction, RP is going to be higher in plane strain, uh, plane stress than in plane strain condition. Mm This is after correction.
okay so uh, we know what is ry that is 1 by 2 pi k1 square by sigma y square but we don't know what is rp right so somehow if we can figure out how much stress is being redistributed and where it is being redistributed and if we can calculate then we should be able to figure out what is rp okay so let's do that So we need to now do calculation of RP, which is Plasti zone size after correction, after redistribution of stress. Okay, so our new curve is like this. Okay. After small scale yielding, and this region needs to be redistributed. Okay, let's say that this is A. Okay, so shaded area needs to be redistributed. Okay, and this area now, A, we can calculate as integration of 0 to Ry, sigma 1, 1 dr minus sigma r Ry, right? So, what I am doing, if you see, initially had Right. So I'm so this is also sigma one one. This is also again the bottom one is also sigma one one. One is for uh, after consideration of small scale yielding, and one is there is no consideration. And we know, know this sigma y y. We have calculated that using Irwin's uh, approximation. Okay. So what I'm doing, I am uh, subtracting the overall area. Okay, with the bottom one. So if this is R Y. So if I denote this say number one and number two. So number one is the green shaded. Okay. And number two is purple. Okay, so this is this area is purple region and this is green region. Okay, so cal to calculate the green region, we are integrating it from 0 to Ry, right? That particular term, sigma 1 1 dr, and then subtracting this area with the purple shaded region, which is a rectangle. That is sigma y minus r y. Uh, sorry, sigma y into r y. Okay. So let's now do that. 0 to r y. What is sigma 1 1 uh, in the track plane? So all theta term is going to be 0. So we can write k1 by root 2 pi r dr sigma y r y. Okay. And if I do it further, we can write 2 k1 divided by root 2 pi root r 0 to ry minus sigma y ry. Okay. And we can write 2 k1 by root 2 pi root ry minus sigma y ry. Okay, so this is the expression for A. Okay, see A on the top left. 
So now we know what is the region, the area which needs to be redistributed in the material. And we also know what is uh, Ry. So Ry is 1 by 2 pi A1 sigma y square. Okay. So let's put this. So let me now mark uh, the equation number 1, equation number 2, and equation number 3. Now let's put 3 into, so we are just replacing sigma uh, Ry in equation 2. So from equation 2, you can write 2k1 by root 2 pi and we are replacing now Ry. So we can write 1 by root 2 pi a1 by sigma 1 and here Ry is 1 by 2 pi a1 sigma y square. So this will now become 2 by 2 pi a1 square by sigma y minus a1 square by sigma y into 2 pi. Or we can write a now as a1 square by 2 pi sigma y. Okay. So overall expression now for the redistribution of stress area is k1 square by 2 pi sigma. Okay. Now this redistribution, whatever is happening needs to be in the area which is shown on the top image you can see. Let me change the color now. Something else. Let's see black. So this black shaded region. Okay. So whatever redistribution is happening, this needs to happen in the black region. And this is sigma y. Okay. And let's say this is lambda. Okay. So what is the area of the black region now? Sigma y into lambda. So now the a which we have just calculated dash should be equal to sigma y into lambda for redistribution to occur. Okay, let's do that. So a needs to be equal to sigma y into lambda. So A is equal to sigma y lambda. Okay, and what is A? We have calculated this k1 square divided by 2 pi sigma y sigma y lambda. So lambda is k1 square divided by 2 pi sigma y square or Lambda is 1 by 2 pi k1 by sigma y square. What do you think this, this uh, expression is? This is same as Ry, isn't it? So it is same as Ry. Interesting, right? So lambda is equal to Ry. Now what is Rp? If you see Rp, now I am on the top left, this is Rp, right, and Rp is what, Ry plus lambda, so Rp is Ry plus lambda, so Rp now will be 2 Ry, so even after redistribution, you know, the, what you have to do, you know what is Ry, you have to just multiply it by 2. So, it becomes double. So, Rp is now twice of Ry after redistribution and that is what Irwin proposed. 
So RP is now 2 into 1 by 2 pi A1 sigma y squares. So RP is 1 by pi. Okay. So now we have corrected Ry, figure out what is Rp, which is the correct uh, expression. So very well valid for plain stress condition, right? Because in plain stress, uh, this sigma y is there. But now in plain strain condition, sigma y will be replaced by sigma 1, 1 plus uh, sigma, uh, sorry, sigma y will be replaced by sigma y plus sigma 2, 2, right? That's when we... Uh, taught about the separation, yielding separation, right? So we have to figure out what is sigma 2. Two. So let's do some more approximation and figure out what is sigma 2. Two. And overall, you will see that RP in plane string conditions, we can give in terms of K1 and sigma y itself. So, plain strain condition. Now, assume that sigma 2 2 at the track tip is not 0, right? And in the track plane, if you remember the Irving uh, derivation we had done, all theta term will be uh, off, right? And sigma 1 1 we can write a1 by root 2 pi r and sigma 2 2 is also same. Okay. That means sigma 1 1 equal to sigma 2 2 in front of the thread tip. Again, we are assuming now that sigma 2 2 is not going to be 0 at the surface. Right. Because if that is the case, sigma 1 1 can never be sigma 2 2. But we are just assuming so that we can reach to some conclusions. Okay? For plain strain condition, we know sigma 3 3 is mu sigma 1 1 plus sigma 2 2. Okay. And we can write sigma 3 3 as mu sigma 1 1 plus sigma 1 1 because sigma 2 2 is equal to sigma 1 1 or 2 mu. Okay. And if we assume mu equal to 1 by 3, this is going to be 2 by 3 sigma 1 1. Okay. So sigma 3 3 is going to be 2 by 3 sigma 1 1 assuming mu is equal to 1 by 3. Okay. Let's apply the Trestor criteria. Sigma 1 1 minus sigma 3 3 equal to sigma y. Now here we are taking sigma 3 3 instead of sigma 2 2 what we had been taking because now we are saying that sigma 1 1 equal to sigma 2 2. So if sigma 1 1 is the maximum sigma 2 2 is also higher than sigma 3 2. The minimum is sigma 3 3 now in this particular case. Again, there are some assumptions in this case, right? So we can write sigma 1 1 and sigma 3 3 is 2 by 3 sigma 1 1 equal to sigma y or sigma 1 1 equal to 3 sigma y. Okay. So if we assume that, you know, the sigma 2, 2 is not 0 at the crash surface, right, then sigma 1, 1 for yielding is coming out to be 3 sigma y, right? And if we don't assume, then it is it was sigma y plus sigma 2, 2, right? So after assumption, using the Tresta criteria, we are able to figure out that sigma 1, 1 is 3 sigma y, okay? So this is the yielding. So, as soon as sigma 1 1 becomes 3 sigma y, your material is going to weigh and you can safely now calculate what is plastic zone size, right? So, what I am saying is
So this is your sigma 1 1. So as soon as sigma 1 1 becomes 3 sigma y in this case, your material is going to yield and your curve is, will be something like this. And this is your RY. Right? Below this RY, you are going to have yielding of the material. Again, it is a perfectly plastic, so it becomes flat. If it is strain hardening, then it is going to go up. Okay. So RY now we can write as 1 by 2 pi. And again, it is an approximation. So I will give approximation sign K1 by now sigma y will be replaced by 3 sigma y square okay so for plane stress condition sigma 1 1 was sigma y so we were getting 1 by 2 pi k1 square by sigma y square for plane strain condition sigma 1 1 is 3 sigma y so we are just replacing 3 sigma y here okay so, Ry is approximately equal to 1 by 18 pi k1 by sigma y square. So, in plane strain, we figure out Ry is approximately 1 by 18 pi k1 by sigma y square, right? But there were approximations, right? That sigma 2, 2 is also higher and it will be equivalent to sigma 1, 1, right? But that is not the reality. Sigma 2, 2 is going to be 0 at the crack tip, right? So that effect will be felt at some place ahead of the Tip, right, because sigma 2 2 is much lower than what we have assumed, right, and that is what people have calculated and they have come up with that sigma 1 1 is not equal to actually 3 sigma y because of the sigma 2 2 being 0 at the track tape, right, it is going to be much lower than 3 sigma y, and they have calculated that to be root over. 3 sigma y. Okay. So, because of sigma 2 2 being 0, right, sigma 1 1 is going to be less than 3 sigma y and it has been calculated that sigma 1 1 is in fact root over 3 sigma y. So, instead of 3 sigma y, it is 1.732 sigma y. Okay. And this is happening because sigma 2 2 is equal to 0 at the practice. So, the stress will be lower. Okay. So, overall, sigma r y now will become 1 by 2 pi a1 by, now sigma y will be replaced by root 3 sigma y square. So, Ry is 1 by 2 pi and now 6 pi. Okay. A1 by sigma y square. Let me write down again because 6 is not visible clearly. Okay. We have calculated uh, the plastic zone size for both the cases, uh, plane stress and plane strain condition. Let me summarize these two. Ry and Rp, which is equal to 2 Ry. Okay. Plane stress. Plane strain so this is 1 by 2 pi 
k1 by sigma y square so this is very simple right in plane space so we have to just multiply it by 2 so this becomes 1 by pi k1 by sigma y square okay in plane strain condition ry calculation remember sigma y now becomes root 3 y sigma y okay so this becomes 1 by 6 pi k1 by sigma y square multiply it by 2 so 1 by 3 pi k1 by sigma y square okay so overall we have now calculated what is rp so this is your solution after correction given by irwin okay so now let me stop here uh, in the next lecture we'll start with the shape of the plastic zone so till now we have calculated the size of the plastic zone remember again on the track plane okay now what happens if uh, it is not on the track plane and r and theta varies right so we are going to do that in the next class okay. so thank you